So Melbourne has gone into a snap seven day lockdown. <sighs> but I get it, it's a short term measure. I am not freaking out. I, I was gonna buy all this anyway. You don't know how much I poop a week. The mood is pretty grim out there and not just because it's winter. So what I am gonna do is something that I did during last year's big lockdown, which is put out a whole bunch of my typewritten poetry pieces. Last year, I created a treasure hunt out of these and it was really cool. I got picked up by the media. There was a newspaper article about me. I was on TV and the radio and essentially doing this gave people something to do, to look forward to. And I received some really lovely messages about the difference that I was making to people. But since I recently got a camera and have started making YouTube videos, I thought I'd document the process so you can see what I'm doing. And as I do this treasure hunt, you can come along for the ride with me. First, I should probably give you a little bit of a background to this project. I actually started doing this stuff five years ago when I lived in Sydney. As soon as I moved there, I noticed all of the street art and I wanted to contribute. I first tried paste ups, but quickly discovered drawing isn't my thing. I'm more of a words person. So I gave post-it notes a go, then drawing on the pavement in chalk, and also a stamp kit with individual letters, which was painfully tedious. And then eventually I just got a typewriter. And I think this was partly inspired by seeing a lot of people at the time using these typewriter fonts online on Instagram. My reason for putting them out in public was, yeah, for other people to see, but also as reminders for myself. You see, when I moved to Sydney, it was really tough on me. I moved there, I didn't know anyone, and my mental health really took a dip. I would be walking around between my commute and around the city, kind of like, feeling like a cloud was following me. I live in Melbourne now, so I'm in a much better place in more ways than one. Boom, roasted. But I still like to put them up because I know there's other people out there who are, you know, perhaps they've just moved to this city or for whatever reason they're going through, they're feeling like a cloud's following them around. Because let's be real, it's Melbourne, so there's always clouds. Boom, roasted. Now it's even. This is my way of reaching them in a very, serendipitous kind of way. I mean, if you think about it, seeing something on a wall is so much more engaging and personally relevant than coming across it on social media. It creates an experience out of the art and people often feel like the message was there for them. And if they like it, then they can just take it rather than just screenshotting it. Or if they hate it, like this one person did, they can just write F U on it. Plus, the algorithm sucks. So this is my way of sharing my artwork in a different way and taking things back into my own hands. Anyways, less talking, more typing, I think. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. I got my nifty typewriter. This is a Brother 215. I originally started with an Olivia model. This is more modern, but better condition and requires less repairs. I actually got this from typewriter store in Melbourne, North Melbourne, Carlton, I think. Wonderful old gentleman called Tom. Here's a store called Tom's Typewriters. Definitely check it out if you're interested in getting one. Also got the paper. This is from a brand called Arches. I'm saying that in case they may want to sponsor me. Um, I find that it's really nice texture to it. It's not too heavy that it cost me a fortune and it's just heavy enough that people notice it and they say, hey, this is something I want to keep. Let's start typing. If you see me checking my phone, it's because I'm looking for previous poems that I've written. Or maybe I might flip through my journal. Sometimes I have little metaphors and single lines that I can work with. Or sometimes I just come up with them on the spot. I like to use a typewriter because it puts me in a different frame of mind compared to using my laptop or the computer. Laptops are computers, laptop or my phone. <laughs> the reason for that is because if I'm working with the typewriter, I can't backspace. I've got to finish every poem. So that kind of pressure forces me to dig a bit deeper where the gold is. If I do happen to get stuck, I need some inspiration, then I can pull open some books. I have two here. Uh, the first is Every Day is a Poem by Jacqueline Susskind. 
She ran a course by the same name and it's great. I really do recommend checking it out. This book really covers the, the principles of poetry writing and how you can get involved. The other book that I have is Here at Dawn by Bo Taplin. Bo is a fellow Melbourne based poet. I really like his style and resonate with a lot of his messages. This one is actually signed by him and I'm going to read what he wrote. To Ricky, my fellow storyteller. The charge we have been given is a great and rare gift. May you always be a sharp beacon of light on the earth. You leave a place of shelter and warmth. Okay, got a whole bunch of tight pieces, some blue tack. So let's hit the road, Jack. Your name's probably not Jack, but um, you can still come. First thing that I do is to hop in the running app called Strava. Uh, it's a GPS tracking app for cyclists and runners. And what this does is create a map that I can upload, which shows exactly the route that I took. I think this is an example of one that I might put. Uh, might take a photo of those people as a clue and then I've kind of put one just on the sign that you can see right there. I try to put them in places where they're not too obvious. Um, normally I just put them where people can kind of see them, but if I'm doing a bit of a hunt, then I try to put them in a place where you kind of have to look. I am fully aware it looks real dodgy doing this, walking around loitering with my pockets, fiddling in my pockets and on my phone. Uh, this guy actually came up to me once in an alleyway and asked if I had any shard for sale, which I found out means ice. I have a feeling he asked because of the shirt I'm wearing, but I have a feeling that he only saw maybe the second part. That is the last piece, so I am now going to head home. Now that I'm home, it's time to post the map that I recorded in Strava, along with the photo visual clues to Instagram, so people know the hunt is on. The cool thing about this project is that it's the integration of two types of technologies. Modern technology, the smartphone, along with the typewriter. It combines the physical world along with the digital world. The other part of this is kindness and community. Being recognised in the paper and as well as the feedback that I get has shown me the impact that I personally and art can have. Art can be incredibly powerful and I think we often underestimate it. Another example of a really inspiring project is the Before I Die wall. That was created by someone called Candy Chang and she did a TED talk on this. I'll link it below for you to check it out. I hope watching this video has inspired you to think about what you can do with your talents or hobbies. In a small way or big way, I think we can all make the world a bit of a better place. If you'd like to see more from me, just head to boyunderthebridge.com. I'm also in the process of putting together a hard copy photo book, which will be a collection of my poetry pieces. It's called The Texture of Words. If you're interested in that, please do follow me along or drop a comment below and I'll keep you in the loop as to when they'll be ready. But that is a wrap for this video. Thank you for watching and you'll see more from me soon. Stay safe and don't panic by.